Amen. Amen. Now, like yesterday, we spoke about the, the language of, of increase being the language of faith activated by speaking. The language of increase being faith activated by speaking. This morning, we're going to be um, looking at another aspect of increase. And I want to look at that the source of increase. And I did it before in the beginning of the month, which is God. And you see, <laughs> until we come to the point where we are so convinced and sure that he is the God of increase, we might always be struggling. I'll tell you that again. Until we come to a point where we are so sure, we are so sure that he is the God of increase, we'll be struggling. I'll never forget this line by Tony Evans. He says that God is the source. Every other thing is a resource. The problem is we begin to focus on the resource. We begin to think that the resource is the source. And that begins to introduce frustration because after a while you're so caught up with the resource. So if the, a resource is caught off, maybe your job, maybe you're changing job or something happened, we lose our peace because the resource has been caught off. And we begin to think, and then it begins to reveal to us where our trust has been all along. It's been in the resource. It's been in the resource, not the source. I remember in 2017, I believe, 2016 or 17. What was this? Um, I believe it was 2017. July 8th, I believe. 2017. I had an I, I had an encounter and the outcome was what God was saying to me. Don't the day it was he was speaking to me about what I, I'm to do, and that's where the oh, I speak. Someone was saying to me how. Yeah, you have been so faithful with this. I speak every of your posts, everything I said. It's not me trying to be faithful. It's become part of my identity. I'm, it's, no, and this is the wrong word. It's become part of my DNA and, and is, is like a mission. I'm reminding myself, you know, I can never be silenced and everything like that because I had an encounter. And one of the things the Lord said to me that it was, you should get, it's, it's not about the assignment. And that's where I really got understanding about how some of us, the same way, we are so stuck on an assignment and we sometimes mistake an assignment to our purpose, mistake an assignment to our calling as a way. Assignment is assignment. So that now for some people, God might put them in the same assignment for the rest of their life. One assignment for some people, God is moving you from assignment to assignment. And I remember that used to create a lot of confusion because I love some assignment than some other assignments. Right? I used to be on radio. I used to do training. I used to do emceeing. I used to do, so there was a lot of things. And when it came, like it was, it felt like I was dialing down whereas I was actually increasing. All right. And because God was changing the focus. And he said to me that he clearly is when I tell you to start speaking, I should be worried. You should come and say, okay, God, are we, but if it's that, it's still the speaking, but different assignments keeps, keep moving. And what am I saying? The same thing is when you get to a point where the source, you are cut off from the source. Like you, should, you should be worried. And you know what's cut off from the source is your devotion with God is affected. You can't hear God anymore. You don't feel the presence anymore um, or the knowing of, or you are living in sin. That's when you should be worried. But if it's that a source, there's a shaking of a source or there's a redirect, redirection of a source. Oh, you're in the same place. As long as you can hear God. Today, I'm talking about the source of increase, which is God. And one vital part of the source of increase is that you hear God. If you don't hear God, you cannot even activate the language of speaking, which is faith. You need to hear God. You need to hear God. Ha! You need to hear God. I was speaking with someone yesterday and he said, I heard God. He looked at like I was stupid, but I heard God. The thing about hearing God is it will bear fruit. 
The problem is we have more carnal Christians today than spirit-led Christians. Carnal Christians where that have not been able to separate between their needs and what God is saying, separate between their desires. So sometimes their desires are so strong and so loud that it becomes the, vo- the, Lord of, the voice of the Lord. But of course, you can desire something so, so strongly that it becomes the voice of God. How do you differentiate it? Of course, the, by the word. So let's look at that scripture in John 15, John 15 that talks about, and that's where I want us to pray, understanding that God is a source of increase. You must be born again. You must be aligned with Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit, as you give your life to Christ, there's an activation of it. You must be led by God. I must hear God. God is the source of increase. You see, when the Lord opened my eyes to this scripture, I think I was just coming into July, right at July. Oh, it was like somebody... Somebody snapped something in my head. In 1 Corinthians 3, when Paul said, it is not either waters that is important or either plants. It is God who gives this increase. You know what that means? Regardless of what the economy is saying, it is God. That means whatever the economy says, there's a way of escape. There's something God knows because it's the source of increase. All these things, all these other places is us partnering with God, you know, navigating this path with God so that we can enjoy what he has to it can we can position ourselves to be connected to whatever resource and so that we too can become a resource for god is the god of it. somebody say god is the god of increase and that is one of the things i'm praying we will experience this month you will experience god as a god of increase you cannot receive increase from a god you suspect a god you don't trust a god you are not sure will come through on his word because of human human lack, sometimes we have dealt with humans that they, they, they lack integrity. And for that reason, it has affected a lot of us from believing that some people's word is their bond. If they say, I'm going to do it, it means they're going to do it. Hallelujah. Look at this verse. It says that, verse 16, John 15, 16 says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Another way we say, I appointed you, I should go and increase and that your foot should remain. That whatever you ask the father in my name may give you. These things I command that you love one another. If you back up, you realize you can only ask the father whatever you want and he gives you because people have used this as a blank check because his word is in you and his will is your will. But if the will you are asking is not God's will, you're on a very long thing. So how then do you make your will, God's will, or not is one to abide? And that's how you know the God of increase. See, listen, we have to stop being tourists in the presence of God. We need to be abiders and dwellers. A lot of us are tourists. When we tour the Bible, we're touring the Bible. We never dwell. We tour scripture. Prayer is a product. Get your things met, needs met. Prayer is not any intimacy. You are not interested in knowing anybody. I was sharing somewhere and I said, the object of our intimacy must be God. It can't be because, oh, I, I like the idea of intimacy. Now we say the Lord, oh, are you intimate with God? And people have come up with different ways to look like, I, I don't, whatever you are doing, whatever you desire to, you know, pray 50 hours, which is great. Desire to go deeper in God. Desire to know God, read your Bible, all these things. Great. But if the object, the essence of doing this is not to know God, but to, to do a thing, you're still missing it. We're still missing it. After a while, we'll become obsessed with what we can do. So the source of increase is God. And I'm going to teach on the blessing by God's grace next week. I'm so intrigued by it. I, I saw it a while ago. I think last year I did a message on it about how God's intent for us is the blessing, not a miracle. Does God want us to have miracles? Yes, don't get me wrong. What I mean is that the original but the best of God is the blessing. Miracles are God's way of intervention to recorrect something. So when you experience a miracle, God is reconnecting you back to connect to the blessing source. So if you need a miracle again, no problem. I'm not saying you should leave and say, I don't need a miracle. No, but begin to desire the blessing. I spoke to somebody yesterday, a man of God, and he said, see, Missy, your income alone was never designed to take care of everything God has to do with you. 
but the blessing of God upon your income, the blessing of God upon your efforts, the blessing of God, that is what brings, adds no sorrow. Why? Scripture says, the blessing of God make it rich and add no sorrow. Not your job, not your promotion. is the blessings that cater of God that make it rich and add no sorrow. So your income can make you rich, but add a sor add sorrow there. Your connections can make you rich and add sorrow, sorrow there. God forbid. I mean, I don't want to give some funny examples, but you can just imagine things. You can experience things that make you rich, but they come with a little bit of sorrow. What makes rich? The blessing. And part of the blessing is salvation. Like you give your life to Christ. You know Christ Jesus. You begin to build a relationship with him. Part of the blessing is that you remain in communion, intimacy with him. You study the word. You begin to understand your DNA. I keep telling you how I know that God wants us to increase and be blessed. In, in the book of Genesis 1, the first thing God said to you was blessing. The first thing God said to you, Genesis 1, he said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. That was the first thing God said to you. So we need to have the blessing mindset. It's not a um, prosperity message, something. No, it's some people, I mean, the blessing. I love um. Then God blessed them, Genesis 128, and said to them, be fruitful. You open your eyes like the first thing God said to man was the blessing. So you see why? It is God. And guess what? This blessing is not anything else that releases the blessing, but God that gives the blessing. So that's why I love Psalms 127. Let me read it to you. Psalms 127, if you use the TPT version, it says that it is senseless to walk morning till night for fear of not having enough. If that is still your propelling factor for working, you need to switch to the blessing zone. It is God that gives the increase. This does not call for laziness. This does not call for lack of participation. In fact, this is more work, more work within the fight of faith to remain. Psalm 127 typically says, if God's grace doesn't help the builder, they will labor in vain to build a house. Meaning they will build a house, but they labor in vain. Probably they will labor in vain. Probably they will finish the house. Probably they will build something that looks like a house. But what about the foundation? Can it withstand the test of time? What can it do? If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circulate in vain. Verse is where I'm really going. He said, it's, it really is senseless to work so hard from morning till night, toiling to making a living for fear of not having enough. God can provide for his lovers even while they sleep. So God's invitation for you to walk is not because, God's invitation for you to walk is not because, the, I mean, you see how God did it. He created everything you needed before he invited you to work. So the essence of coming to work is not so that you can, it's not because so that it can be your source. No, he invited you to work, to partner with him, to reproduce. Our essence of working is for reproduction, is for increase, is to increase what God has given. We increase whatever capacity we have on our inside. The essence of working, for instance, is to become, is to, for some of you, God has called you to increase the labor market. God has called you to increase the labor market. That's why. The essence of some of us work, God has called you to be employers of labor. Some of you, God has called you to increase value. So you are not the owner of the company. You are a staff in the company, but you are increasing value of the place. You are increasing value of the place. So increase, 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 increase. So if you go to, if you keep working, if you keep moving from the toily mentality, you might be very busy. You might be making a lot of money, but maybe you don't have the mindset of blessing. Maybe there's a bit of sorrow here and there. You know what the blessing does? The ble part of the blessing is to learn forgiveness so that there is no sorrow. No, There's no sorrow. There's joy. So we're going to be praying the blessing today. Lord, help us to focus on you. Is the, is the, God is the source. God is the source of increase. He was the one that declared blessing on us in the book of Genesis. He is the source of increase. He is the one that declared blessing on us. So therefore, it means that he knows is the source. Everything else, your work, your con contact, your partnership, your clinic, whatever it is you have, they are all resources. So we may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You know why? Because God is the God of is the God of, is the source is the source of increase. You might go through certain trying season, maybe a resources challenge or something. But guess what? Source, the source never runs dry. You see, if we have this mentality that God is a source of increase, meaning that it do, this source does not run dry. This source does not have issues with dollar, pounds, they are sterling, whatever it is. This source does not, it, it doesn't play, it doesn't play funny cards, don't play politics. This source is, doesn't run out. 
comes time that God says, you never run out because I don't run out. This source is not tired. So part of the source to what you need in life and you increase in his strength. So this source does not run out. Favor, he doesn't run out. It's the source of favor. I mean, no man can give you anything. God has not opened his heart for it. Try and lobby for something. No problem. Have you seen when people have lobby, lobby, and they're not looking at them? Favor is a currency. Favor is a garment. He is the source. He is the source. The moment we, we focus on the source and say, Lord, what do we do with all this resource? That's why you can't spend your money anyhow. Because he's the source. He's the source. You need to ask him, what are we doing with this money? What are we doing with this influence? What are we doing with these things? He is the source. I had to keep telling myself. Myself, it felt like it hit me. What was saying? All of you are here fighting me and telling me that Apollos is better than me. You, 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 you are foolish. That's what Paul was trying to say. You lack wisdom. Because if you look closely, you realize it is not what is important. It's not even what, this seed that you are fighting that you think you plant is God that gave you. The watering that you water the plant is God that gave you. So who is the source? Who, who, who brought about the increase? It is God. We're just here. God is making us look good. Like we're the one doing the things. Whereas he's the one doing it. But he, just, he didn't mind putting his glory on us. He didn't mind shining his light on us. He's really God doing all these things. That's I don't know how people want to take glory for anything. Not for your life. Not for even being a parent. Not for being a great wife. Not for the ministry. Not for your job. Not for your... You can't take glory because even everything. Honestly, you are just a front. God is the one doing everything. God is the one doing it. When people ask for PI, you know, thank God. You know, I, I started thinking about it. When people say you are considered for 70, I'm wondering, who can, can you just, have, have you not seen many people that have, de, have been determined in their life and they want to be consistent, but nothing is working. It is the grace of God. It is the grace of God. On my best days is grace. So on my worst days is still grace. It's grace all the way. He is the God of source. That's why the Bible says, let the people praise me. Let the people praise me. Then the land will yield its increase. You are praising God like, God, thank you for this seed. Thank you for the alpha. This one that we have reached here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this one that we have gotten. Oh, how far that we have gotten. Oh, how far we have gotten here. Thank you, Jesus. So this one we have done. And why is it important to know it's the God of source? You, if you understand what's your source, your ears will be permanently on his heartbeats. Your ears will be open to receive instruction because if you, if you die, if you go one way like this and the source is not going that way or more on your own, you know, part of the reason to stick to the source is to know which resource you want to use for time. So you're not frustrated. If God is, is giving instruction, no, for this business, no, we're not doing like this. Oh, you remain in that job for now. Oh, don't leave that job. No, 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 no. Just stay there. Oh, you come out from there. We're moving this way. I was speaking with somebody. And they said that even with this, okay, was, he was, was in a company and is, is the lead. Anyways, this is what does investment for massive, a massive company. I'm talking about billions, billions portfolios, portfolio. And one day the Lord said to him, move, move, move this money, this company quickly, move from here to here. As he moved it like this, the next day, the miracle that they saw. And he was saying to me that, I don't know how people would do life without hearing God. I don't know how you do life without the Holy Spirit. I don't know how you want to function. Is it where God, how God told some people, quickly go there and you get there, you say that there's a property. Is it how God, how do you want to do your life at all? Not connected to the source. A lot of us are more connected to resources than the source. And that is why sometimes we're frustrated because resource can dry up. Hello, the brook dried up. The raven stopped coming. The manna stopped coming. Even that miracle. After a while, you need the source. Oh, Shatala Bayada. You need the source. After a while, everything, you get there, you get to a place, they tell you, push shoe. Today, they tell you, wear shoe. Tomorrow, some of you get used to a way and you forget that it's God. You get to somewhere, he tells you, sit down. He gets another place, he tells you, stand up. The same God that told Elijah to go to the brook, he dried up. Elijah he said, I'll go to the, I've, I've prepared a widow for you. Imagine Elijah stood there saying, Oh, I love the brook. You have shared testimony of how the Lord fed me by the brook and you have written a book. Hmm, oh, I just rhymed. You, you have the Lord fed you by the book, brook and you have written a book. You've written a book about it and you, are, you have sold out. You are a bestseller. And there's a, you know how sometimes we get used to the mystery of, you know, there's some things that make you feel very, the God that feeds you through the book. And it sounds so, wow, birds come and bring the things. And you love it because it gives you the attention of some mystical, supernatural living kind of thing. 
and just like, wow, look at what God is doing in my life. God said, Mama, Oga, move to town. They're like, no, no, because your life now, because we place the spectacular, we place the, we place the supernatural spectacular, going to a widow and say, yeah, give me, how is that something? Or God tells you, no, 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 no. I know you want to do me, but I want you to go back and, uh, but God is how I've known how to do it too. Or no, is the source and it determines the resource. Is the one that channels through all resources. So when we know this, when we get to a place and in short, we'll go back to him. God, what's going on? What's, because I know you're the one. You're the one that is propelling people to give. You're the one that is doing, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? I will never forget when French pray, um, UK. In fact, when I was doing reference, I've got said telling me, you see, don't create a pattern of what I did. Just be open. I can use any means. I want to do this, any of the thing I'm doing. Just be open. I say, yes, Lord, I'm open. Oh, what peace will often forfeit because we don't go back to God. Oh, what needless pain will bear. All because we do not carry it, everything to God. We don't take everything back to God. We don't go back to the source. And it means staying. You can't be a tourist that you only go and ask God for a question. The problem is not that you will not want to talk. The problem is that you cannot hear him. You can't tell if he's the one speaking. Why? You don't make a practice of hearing God. It's not that God doesn't want to speak. A lot of that will make you know he's speaking, just that there's so much noise. Your mind has been trained to make decisions on its own. There's so much noise. So that's still small voice. It's easy to discard it and not hear. It's easy to discard it. So make a practice of hearing God by being in his presence, staying in his word, praying, obeying him. One of the ways you can forever practice hearing God is practice obedience. Keep obeying. Those nudges, keep obeying, taking step gradually, one step or the other, in line with scripture, taking step gradually and see what the Lord will do. So, Lord, we give you praise. So, Lord, we worship you. We thank you because you're faithful. We thank you because you're good. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Can we just open our mouths and begin to pray this morning? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Oh, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You are the source. Can we just celebrate the source this morning? If where you are is not noisy, can you unmute your mic? Let's celebrate the source. Let's celebrate the source. Oh, we celebrate you, God. We thank you for how far you brought us. We thank you for what you are doing. In any way, we made ourselves the source. In any way, we I will rest in I will rest in your divine providence from Let me pray. Let me show you why it's important to enthrone God as a source. If there's anything the Lord warned the Israelites about, was don't make don't make yourself the source. He said because he knew. It's very easy. He knew. He knew. He knew. It says, let's read Deuteronomy verse 8 from verse 7. So for the land your God is bringing, and I release this word prophetically over us and everyone. For the land your God is bringing into is a good land flowing with streams, pools of water with fountains and springs that gush out in the valley and hills. It's a land of wheat and barley, of grape vines, fig trees, pomegranates, of olive oil and honey. It's a land where food is plentiful and nothing is lacking. It is a land where iron is as common as stone and copper is abundant in eels. When you have eaten your fill, 
be sure to praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given to you. Look at what he said. But this is a time to be careful. Ah. One of the pitfalls of increase is that we become careless. Some of us, we don't have structure for the money we are asking for. We don't have structure to handle the thing we are asking for, what is about to come to us. When I mean structure is, what do you want to do with it? How do you put accountability in your life? Are there people that can call you and ask you, who do you account to financially? they like, you know what, this is what, what, what's going on, this is what, this is what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. what are the principles that you're obeying? He said, this is the time to be careful. Why? Beware that in your plenty you do not forget the Lord your God and his obey his commandment, the decree that I'm giving you today. For when you have become full and prosperous and built fine houses to live in, when your flocks and heads have become very large and your silver and gold have multiplied along with everything, be careful. Do not become proud at that time and forget the Lord your God who rescued you from slavery and the land of Egypt. Do not forget that he led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with his poison snakes and scorpions where it's so hot and dry. He gave you water from the rock. Some of you, God is reminded of the things he has done. He fed you with manna in the wilderness, a food unknown to your ancestors. He did this to humble you and test you for your own good. He did all this so that you would never say to yourself, can we see that? I have achieved this wealth with my own strength and energy. Remember the Lord your God is the one who gives you power to be successful in order to fulfill the covenant he confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. Deuteronomy 8, 17, 18. That, the essence, God said, be careful. That means it's possible to be proud. It's possible to forget. It's possible to forget even the best of us, even you, even me. It's possible for us to get to a point and forget that this anointing is God. That this strength, I remember when we were declaring yesterday when it came out of my spirit. I remember, I mean, I mean, remember, I said, strength is a miracle. I've seen it. I, I've seen it happen. It's possible to forget. You get to that place, you forget that strength is a miracle. You forget what God is doing. You forget. And then he begins to take credit. Oh, I, I thank God, you know, we're just very diligent. You know, we're very meticulous. One of the language of increase as well, apart from the faith, is, is thanksgiving and praise. So don't forget and think it's you that achieved all these things. That, what, that means is you have replaced the source with a resource or with yourself. And that's what God is calling us. Understand that God is the God of increase. What he does for you is one, he puts you in a place to know if the source cannot be, cannot be quenched, I can never be quenched. The source does not run out, I can never run out. He is God, so you don't trust anything else than God. Number two, he makes you to trust and depend on God. Number three, he makes you to put your ears close to his heart so you can hear God. You will place value on the word of the source than anything else. We place value on other words than the word of the source. Because if he's really the source, you want to put your ears and hear his word. If you know that, it's, it's from here. It's the same way some of you, but you put, you check your mail to be sure that your guy has not sent you mail. Because you know your, your salary is coming. But we think that is the source, forgetting that just resources. So you put your ears. You, you, it's because you don't think God is the source. That's why you go on, go on with life without studying the Bible. You go on with life without laboring in the word, studying the Bible, praying. Somebody said lack of pray, prayerlessness is a sign of pride. You think you can figure it out on your own. And I dare say that lack of studying of the word is pride. Lack of do, staying in the fellowship and community is pride because you think you can figure it out on your own. So that's one of the things knowing God is the source. And another thing, it keeps you humble. It helps you remember where you are coming from. I wrote the Psalms. I said, choose, I choose to remember. It's funny. The lot of times, if you read through scripture, we always insult the Israelites. They forgot. Go and read First Kings. First Kings, Second Kings, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles. In fact, it was when Josiah found the scroll that they read. They said, Bible says they had the first Passover. Guys, check this. They had the first Passover. I'm sure after 100 years or more. They had the first Passover since the judges. Since the time of um, judges, that was the time, first time they had Passover. Look at all the years that gone. They forgot. These are people that they had a command. They must always do Passover. They stop observing Sabbath. A lot of things they stopped doing. The, the places God said they must not. The places that made God to strike Aaron's children dead. The things that they did, the mismatching of temple things. These ones, they didn't just mismatch. They even brought idol into the temple. They even sold some of the temple items. And what did God do? He gave them. So that's what he said. We will give you up to the, you know, the wild desires of man. He gave them up to be to the foreign nations to be 
to be to be occupied by foreign. May we not be occupied by strange spirits. May we not expose ourselves to the point where we step out of the presence of God and we're controlled by other things. What am I saying? Don't forget. And one of the ways you don't forget is focus on him as a source. Seeing him as a source will give you peace. You might go through tough times. Oh, Bible says in this world, you go through tribulations. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. If they be of good thinking, be of good cheer. Rejoice. No matter what you're going through, you have to rejoice. Rejoicing is not an option. It's a, it's a reflection of the state of our hearts. Joy is not dependent on what has happened. Joy is not happiness. Joy is not that something happened when I'm laughing. No, joy is a fruit of the spirit. One, joy is one of the ways we express that we're of the kingdom. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy is from the, joy is with joy we draw from the words of salvation. Joy is, 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 is a lot. So if you're not expressing, you are missing. How do you want to draw from the words of salvation you don't have joy? So be of good cheer. We'll go through things. You go back to your source. Lord, what's going on here? What do I need to know? Pray in the spirit. Take out time. Fast. Seek his face. As Achan entered my camp, it could be something in your heart. It could be something you said. God is the source. Some of us, we will forget we are a resource. And we think we are the source. So we begin to posture ourselves as sources in the lives of people. God is just, an, is just privileged to be used by God to bless people. But we now begin to want to take the accolades and, you know, we are larger than life. We are larger than God himself. Just a privilege. He can raise stones to do the very things I'm doing. Somebody, he can raise anybody. That's why. Meaning, I don't know how to interpret that. I don't um, overemphasize my importance. I don't, I don't, I don't think, I, I don't think I of myself as something other than the grace of God. So Lord, we thank you because you are the source. You revealed to us again tonight that you are the source. I'm not full of myself. Thank you so much, Olu. You are the source. You are the source. And we give you all the praise. And Lord, we put our eyes back on you as a source. I would say, dear source, certain resources in our lives are challenged. What do we do about it? Help us, oh God. I, that's why he says that I would do a new thing. I just said this in my spirit. I said, Lord, I don't know what that word is for. He says, as, as I just said that in my script in my heart, Immediately, I felt the Spirit of God. I liked this scripture. I'm going to end with that. Isaiah 43. Immediately, I said that. He said, that is why I said, I will make a way through the wilderness. Isaiah 33, 19. I'm about to do something new. I don't know what this word for, but I'm taking it for myself. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? And the reason why some of us might not see it is because it might not start with, it might not start with um, great. It might not look great. But is it possible that God is or putting things so that we can enter. See, I'm making a path through the wilderness. So that's why he says the source. As I said that, thank you Holy Spirit for that revelation that God, we come before you as a source and we see that certain resources are challenged. Certain resources are short. Lord, what do we do about that? Immediately I heard, I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. So that is why I'm the source. I can make ways out of nowhere. I can do something out of nowhere. So see, I'm doing, don't you see it? I've been singing this song. I'm in the middle of it. Testimony everywhere. Don't God, I see it. Testimony is everywhere. Don't you see it? I'm doing something all around. See, sometimes the new thing does a new thing might come out looking dead. How do I know? When did is it the lava before it becomes caterpillar? When the cocoon is dies, that thing inside the cocoon, it dies, is a new thing that emerges. So forget all the things of the past. Forget all the mistakes. Forget all the error. Forget all the success. Thank me for it. Remember of what, my might, but don't get stuck on, on what, I've, what I've done or the great things and you are satisfied. But remember my might. But see, I will make a way through the pathway. Whatever resource that is challenged for anybody here this morning, God will make a way in the pathway. Is it your husband? God will make a way. Is it your marriage? So thank you, Elizabeth. One more time, I'm going to pray for our marriages. I'm going to declare, Father, Lord, open heavens in the name of Jesus. Over our every marriage here, showers of blessing, showers of blessing in the name of Jesus. Any way that anybody has turned their spouse as a source, we ask for mercy. And we make them, we take, make you back the source of the home, the source of the marriage. Let new wine flow. Yes, Lord, make new pathway in that marriage. New pathway. You know how you, you say source? You are so angry because you think it's a source. 
Some of us are so obsessed. Don't get me wrong, go. There's nothing wrong with anticipating a good marriage, but some of us, there's an obsession of how you think your marriage should be or how that person should be. Just lay down at God's feet and ask him for mercy and let him help you. He will make your way. Whatever it is we're going, he will make your way in the name of Jesus. We take that word this morning and we're wrong with it. God will make a way for us. He will make a way. Whatever ever resource that is blocked, is it financial? Is it economical? Is it um, your health? Whatever resource, is it your job? Whatever your, is it a delay? Whatever resource that you are being denied, whatever resource that is not opening, whatever resource that is adding sorrow, Lord, the God of our source, we come to you and thank you for this word. You will make a way. Glory be to God in the highest. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. All right, God bless you all. Don't forget, you can use this link to join the nine, um, 12, 3, 6, 9, 12, 3. I'm back again tomorrow. God bless you all. Have a great day.